what is enlightenment questions on enlightenment session i have been speaking on the question that was asked by sajid about watchfulness and enlightenment the nature of the mind is mind invents question but it does not receive the answers answers are received by the heart so as soon as you have asked the question you have to move to the heart and listen to the question remember these questions are not objective they are subjective and their response has to be given in a subjective way because question emerges out of your subjectivity how the energy when begins to work at different centers out of that a question arises and master has to respond not to the question but to the subjectivity that's why it takes a little longer time to respond i cannot answer the question in yes or no or this or that each question has to be responded as a methodology in the process of inward journey after that i had asked sajid to read something he came back with certain more questions which cannot be entertained during this particular session but one thing i would like to mention it is said god created man and there is one god christianity says and islam says there is one god no there is not one god instead there are two gods one the unmanifest that created you that remains unmanifest beyond all religions and everything the other god is that has been invented by the religions the islamic god the christian god the hindu god and so on and so forth it is that the god that you have created creates the problems in the process of a spiritual journey out of this religion created god a mind arises and that mind always seeks tries to compare when something is said it looks for the parallel remember religion is not a compare the inward journey is not a comparative study of different religions that is the aspect of philosophy and those who want to compare the different religions and systems master is not worried about the comparison he is like a doctor whose sole objective is to provide the health correct the malfunctioning of different organs or systems and provide optimum health to his patient so to the function of the master is to provide inward health to the seeker so that the journey continues i would narrate two incidents one is from 17th or 16th century the master is hazrat khwaja mohammad masoom razi allah taala and it was the time of the mughal emperor shah jahan he was the disciple of hazrat khwaja mohammad masoom he brought all his sons to roza e sharif in sarhind in india and asked the master sheikh tell me which of my sons will be the next emperor of india hazrat khwaja mohammad masoom was sitting on a on a place which is normally when you come to a master he is sitting on a maybe ground maybe a little high place or a couch or whatever things are available for him he got up from his seat where he was sitting and he asked one by one the sons of shah jahan and said in persian be nashi have a seat pointing towards the seat where sheikh was sitting when a guest comes to your house you ask him to sit down pointing to the chair or the place that is available for him to sit down dara shiko said how can i sit down that is your seat he failed the interview no he cannot be the king he was pious he was very much interested in his scriptures and he made the arrangement to get these translated into persian language so that he can understand it he can read it the story also says the anecdotes that he studied 
many things of the other religions and the systems as well. The second son, last came the chance of Aurangzeb, who became the next emperor. He got up his seat and asked him to sit down. Aurangzeb read a couplet in Persian. That meant if your master is saying to dip your janamas in wine, do so because he knows what is haq. Haq means truth. Janamas is the prayer mat. Just as you have exercising mat which is not of significance, you can place it is not considered as sacred or holy. But janamas, the prayer mat, is considered as holy by Muslims because that is the mat on which spreading the mat they offer their regular prayers five times. He said, and it is considered, and wine is considered as inauspicious according to the Islam. So, this is a controversy. He says, if your master says to dip your janamas in wine, do so, he knows, because he knows what is haq. Haq is truth is not the scriptures. The scriptures do not carry the truth. Master is the truth, he is an embodiment of truth and awareness, he is light. Light is truth. For instance, there may be persons who are well versed in English language, complete command on language, grammar, understanding English, but you are a professor of English and there is a person who has excelled in the field of medicine, obtained his highest degree, MD, finished his PhD in medicine, then some other degrees. Can the professor of English, on the basis of his understanding of the English language and command and grammar, can claim that he can understand a book on anatomy or physiology? Each language has its own terminology. The words, the same word, means differently in different language and disciplines. A book on a book on anatomy is written by, one of the book is written by Thomas Gray. He was a crazy person. During the day he used to study and in the night he was roaming around the graveyards. Any grave that was, any body that was cremated in the night, he will go and dig it out, dissect and study that. And then before the dawn comes, he will bury it back again. And this is how he studied 350 different bodies and created the book, which is known as the Encyclopedia on Anatomy, known as Gray's Anatomy. A very important book based on his experience. Master is awareness. When he says something out of awareness, it is not easy for you to understand. You will try to simply interpret. Innumerable interpretations are on Bhagavad Gita, Bible, Holy Quran, whereas there is only one meaning of a particular verse, particular injunction of the scriptures. And unless you reach to that level of consciousness of the person who has uttered those words, you will not be able to understand. So when it is said, Master is awareness, Master is hub. By saying so, Aurangzeb was saying that I am not capable of knowing what is true and what is not. He is not operating at the level of the mind. Instead, he has descended to the level of heart and he says, it is the master who knows right and wrong. If he is asking me to sit down on his seat, there is no crying, there is no offense on my part because it is he who is asking me to do. And he knows what is right and what is wrong. The word of the Master is the final verdict and the scripture. We have to understand this. This is one incident. So there is no comparison. He did not say that Shara said so or the Hadith says so. No. He simply said if the Master says to dip your janamas into wine, do so because he knows what is right and what is wrong. He knows the hub. Another incident comes in the 3rd century AD. A great Buddhist master Bodhidharma was invited to come to China by the king of the Wu dynasty. A great master is coming. The king was excited. He brought his entire retinue, the queens, the ministers and all the important people in the society on the Indo-China border to receive a great master, a Buddha. When Bodhidharma came, 
He had one slipper in his foot and the next on his head. If you are expecting a great man, a master to come, you are expecting a particular demino, a particular way that he will be dressed. You look at your priest the way they are dressed because they have to go for the sermon and they have to be dressed in a particular way. And here comes a master, weary of the travel, the clothes are wrapped. He has one slipper in his foot and the next on his head. He is coming with intention to say that I am not the mind, I am not the body. Body is not important, the mind is not important, what is important, what flows from within. And that is what a master is. Wu got very embarrassed seeing him. And he was concerned what the people will be saying. That he brought all of them to receive a great master. And here comes a man looking ugly, shabbily dressed with one slipper in his foot and the neck. So when he saw the embarrassment on the face of King, he said, this is how I am. If you want me to come to your place, I'll come. Otherwise, I will go to the mountains and wait for the person for whom I have come. I have not come for you. Then, normally, if you are doing great things, as everybody does, thinking that this I am doing is a great and ask questions. So, who ask a question? He says, Sir, I have opened many monasteries. Every day, Buddhist monks are fed the schools and places and so much of charity will work. What is the outcome of all this? We do things in order to gain some reward. And the reward is, will I be able to get the place in the heaven or Jannah or wherever it is? In response to that question, Bodhidharma said, with all these things that you are doing, you will not get the place even in the seventh hell. This further embarrassed Wu. Because he was expecting that he was doing a great Wu. He is asking a very intelligent question. But the master's vision is totally different. He is seeing what is the objective behind it. Is it to impress and both and Wu's impression question meant to show that he is doing great things because he has resources. So he thought that this is a great work. The only work that requires is the inward journey. How your consciousness is moving, how you are able to receive. Another day when I get a chance, I will speak on verses or sutras from Nana, where he speaks on the aspect of listening. Listening is an art and nobody sits. So in response, with this, I will speak on what is enlightenment, so that you can connect the watchfulness, the nature of the question, and also the what is enlightenment. Enlightenment is realization, not revelation. There is a difference between the two. When the flower blossoms, it realizes its innerness and then it is an expression of inner realization, inner joy, bliss or harmony. It explodes into the blossoming of the flower. This is enlightenment. Mysteries of the unknown as beauty, fragrance and splendor are, real, are released in the blossoming of the flower. There is clue. The bud that was closed living in wilderness, all of a sudden opens its petals. And when the petals open, the pollen begins to show the, its beauty and fragrance multiplies and becomes manifold. This is an inner realization. It is not divine revolution. Instead, it is divine realization and the difference is immense. Indeed, divine revelation means something objective and realization is something subjective. The spirituality is subjective. It is as if God is revealed to you. That is revelation means. Christians emphasize on the revelation. You see some God, but you are separate from him. He is separate from you. This is what revelation is. You see a light, the light is outside you. You see a great image that is outside you. 
there is no connectivity between the two but in realization something happens within your subjectivity when a woman gets pregnant something happens within her anatomy and physiology it is an inner growth and out of that growth the child is born this is realization enlightenment is realization enlightenment is finding that there is nothing to find there is nothing to do enlightenment is realization that there is nowhere to go enlightenment is the understanding that this is all this moment is all life is perfect as it is you do not have to do anything to bring any kind of anything that you need to bring and that understanding that this is all this is it is enlightenment it is not an achievement instead it is an understanding nothing is given to you many things has been taken from you all that was false an understanding dawns and there is nothing to achieve and nowhere to go you are already there if a the seed does not have the flower how can seed grow someone asked me how long did it take for you to grow the beard i said i was born with the beard confused how can you say that he was born with the beard i said a man is always born with the beard but a woman is not that's why you don't when the woman grows the beard does not grow when a man is born if he does not have this seed potentiality of the beard to grow the beard will not grow the seed has the potentiality of, of becoming the flower the potentiality is in born if the seed is given proper nourishment proper fertilization the air water in right proportion it is bound to blossom into a beautiful flower that remains hidden and nobody knows whether it is a red rose or orchid or any other flower from the seed the gardener knows that this seed when it blossoms it will become an orchid or the rose of a particular color master is the gardener you are the seed you are the potentiality he knows which of the seed has to be has to grow he provides the equal nourishment and the seeds planted on the same flower bed blossoms differently according to their inner potentiality it is not achievement it is inner growth you are that is why i said you are already there you have never been away the seed has never been away from the flower but it did not know until it blossoms into a flower all the gardener does continue to give the nourishment whatever is needed so that the seed could blossom into the flower you cannot be away from there god has never been missed maybe you have forgotten that is all maybe you have fallen into sleep god is not separate from us or from existence i believe in god who is creativity that you see all around i do not believe in god as a person instead i believe in godliness as a quality enlightenment is divine realization you realize that you are god but it is profane to say when ali lad mansoor said anal haq i am the light i am the true it was considered as blasphemy and that is the narrowness of a particular understanding and that is where the problem arises when you are using your own intelligence to understand the words that carry the subtlest matter the subtlest expression you realize that everything is godly only god exists and nothing else in the stone trees birds rivers mountains and the people whether they know it or not the same principle the same quality is hidden at the very center of the entire being enlightenment is becoming so full of light that you can see your own center and realize your godliness realize your potentiality then you are the embodiment of the scriptural injunction isha the god permeates through the entire cosmos as the only cosmic energy 
This makes a lot of difference. When you consider God separate, the flower and seed are not separate. The flower is hidden in the seed. The flower is hidden in the seed. And in the flower, the seed becomes unmanifest. In you, God remains hidden. In an enlightened one, God becomes manifest. And that is the meaning of the fana. You do not exist as you expect it to be existing. You as an ordinary drop of water, meaningless. Now you have become magnanimous, oceanic. You have become cosmic. All the rivers, all the qualities, drop attains to the quality of the ocean. Wherever you take the drop from the ocean, it is the same. And that is the very nature of enlightenment. At that level of understanding, at that level of awareness, the scripture says, Isha Vasimidam, that which is permeates through the entire cosmos. If you understand this, you can enjoy the fruits of the entire existence. This makes a lot of difference when you consider God separate, then you are only a puppet. And God is your teddy bear. You can never be free. That is why religious people are never free. They cannot attain to freedom. A Hindu mind always seeks the Hindu answers. A Christian mind seeks a Christian answer. Muslim mind always seeks the parallel. It is not needed. You do not go and ask the doctor if this medicine that you are giving is mentioned in the scriptures or it is a part of Shara. You are concerned with your life. It's a question of life and death. And you completely rely on the doctor to treat you so that your particular ailment that has inflicted upon you is removed. How can you be free of the Creator? He created you. And why did He create you at a certain moment, not before? There is eternity in the past. And Christianity says God created the world 4,400 years before Jesus Christ. It must have been January the 1st, obviously. But what had he been doing until then? Just sitting and doing nothing for the whole of eternity? And then suddenly he creates this world. Not a great idea, either a mess. In six days God created the world. These are parallels, allegoric. And after six days, God got tired, so he rested, and he has been resting since then. This is indeed a strange tides, and it seems to be whimsical that suddenly he decided to create the world. Science has already proved that existence is much older than 6,000 years. And when you look at the Hindu scriptures, it talks about the time which sometimes has been confirmed by the scientists, the NASA and the other space scientists, the distance, the observatories that has been made in India to discover the time. They are based on the distance between the Earth and the particular the Sun and the other stars. It is scientific. Therefore, you cannot depend on such whimsical God. Tomorrow he may decide it is enough and he decides to destroy us. What can you do with a God who is creator, who can make or mutilate you? Then your freedom, then your individuality, both are meaningless. And this is the God that has been created by the man, by the priestly community. Not the God that created you. Nietzsche is right to say that God is death and man is free. Putting two things together, his inside God is dead and now man is free. With God alive, the God that you created being alive, you cannot be free. It is wrong to say God is dead because God is not an object outside the existence. He is not a creator. Instead, he is the innermost reality of the existence. The very core of the existence without, he is the center, just as without the center there can be no periphery. God is the center without which there can be no periphery, no existence, no world, nothing. He is the eternal, he has always been here now and he will always be here now. Then Nietzsche is wrong to say God is dead. When something is eternal, it is beyond death and birth and that is what you are. 
the seed had the flower hidden within it it remains unmanifest until the time comes and the growth happens so too the enlightenment remains hidden in you it does not manifest its light until the time comes the process of creation did not end in 6 days it is still going on it's a continuous process ongoing this is known as the evolution but god has to be put inside it not outside it when you put god outside the world becomes dead and god becomes addicted god inside in the existence makes the whole of life alive everything vibrant and pulsating then god is no longer a danger with this center you can change the distance from center to periphery and create as many peripheries as many circumference as you wish all those who consider enlightenment as divine revolution may have simply dreamt about it or have been hallucinating it was an illusion and nothing else enlightenment cannot be a revelation enlightenment is the realization that i am not just a mortal i am not a material either i am divine to the very core seed cannot speak but it can say that i am the flower so when i said i was born with the beard he said how can that be possible when i was born the beard was invisible it was not seen as the process continued it began to show its sign of enlightenment now it is visible in its splendor beauty and and graciousness deep within my heart the godliness alive and what is happening in me is happening in every one else too the existential energy that pulsates within me permeates through the entire cosmos sentient and insentient you and i there is difference between one who is enlightened and the other who knows what enlightenment is the enlightened one has recognized his inner being that is why he is enlightened and others are fast asleep but there is no qualitative difference those who are asleep may be awake tomorrow my entire effort is to wake you up from that slumber that is all i can do the potentiality is already there what the gardener is doing trying to wake up this seed step by step so that its inner beauty and fragrance and splendor can manifest